Hello dear please subscribe to my channel for more update crypto news senators add crypto taxes to infrastructure deal to raise 28 billion dollars in extra revenue US lawmakers believe they can find 28 billion dollars worth of infrastructure funding by expanding taxation on crypto transactions. Last minute additions to the bipartisan infrastructure deal in the United States Senate saw lawmakers propose expanded cryptocurrency taxation to raise an additional 28 billion dollars in revenue. The proposal will implement tighter rules on businesses handling crypto, expand reporting requirements for brokers and mandate that digital asset transactions worth more than $10,000 are reported to the Internal Revenue Service. Senator Rob Portman of Ohio, the lead Republican for the infrastructure discussions, noted Congress has expressed concerns regarding crypto reporting and taxation requirements for some time. Everybody's been talking about the appropriate way to provide more reporting in particular and that leads to better compliance. The crypto measures were hastily added to the deal on July 28, following weeks of back and forth between the Republicans and Democrats. Revenue from the new crypto taxes will be used to partially fund a $550 billion investment into transportation and electricity infrastructure. The digital asset industry is already pushing back against the proposal, with Blockchain Association Executive Director, Kristen Smith, arguing that many of the firms that would be subjected to the new rules lack the capacity to collect the required information. We're pushing every lever right now to change it, she said, describing the proposed measures as hugely problematic. The proposal comes as crypto assets are coming under increasing regulatory scrutiny in the United States. On July 27, acting controller of the currency, Michael Shu, revealed that regulators are investigating the commercial paper reserves backing leading stablecoin, Tether, USDT. Tether has faced criticism for its opaque reserves and failure to deliver promised audits for roughly half a decade. In May the firm disclosed a breakdown of its reserves that states USDT is 49.6% backed by commercial paper. During a hearing on cryptocurrency before the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs held on the same day, law professor Angela Walsh also called for greater oversight of the mining sector. Walsh highlighted the ability for miners to order blockchain transactions and siphon minor extractable value MEV, as significant issues failing to make it onto the radar of lawmakers. On July 19, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen pushed for greater regulation governing stablecoins and stable token issuers during a meeting of the President's Working Group on Financial Markets. The group expects to have issued draft stablecoin regulations in the coming months. Block Crusher drops lawsuit accusing consensus of stealing its IP consensus described the case's conclusion as highlighting the value of aggressively combating meritless claims. Canadian blockchain startup Block Crusher has agreed to drop an intellectual property IP lawsuit against early backer, Ethereum-focused software engineering firm, Consensus. The two firms filed a joint agreement to dismiss the case on July 27, with the deal's terms prohibiting Block Crusher from attempting to pursue the matter in future. Consensus has characterized the agreement as a victory for its position, stating, Block Crusher has dismissed the lawsuit with prejudice after review of the evidence provided in discovery established that Block Crusher's claims were entirely without merit. Consensus lead counsel, Tiber Nagy, added, This is an important and complete victory for Consensus and illustrates the value of aggressively combating meritless claims. Filed in July 2020, the complaint claimed Consensus launched its Daisy Payments recurring payments platform the day before Block Crusher had planned to bring its own product to market in June 2019. Block Crusher had received a $100,000 investment from Consensus and was admitted into its Tachyon Accelerator program. The startup alleged that Consensus used trade secrets gleaned through the program to front-run its own product to market before Block Crusher. Block Crusher claimed that every aspect of its marketing, financial, technical and regulatory strategy was shared with consensus during the Tachyon program, including the source code and proprietary technical solution to its recurring payments platform. While IP enforcement has been seen as antithetical to crypto's core ethos of decentralized open source development, intellectual property matters have emerged as an increasingly hot issue. In June, major decentralized finance protocol Curve saw a proposal posted to its governance forums advocating that it should move to protect its software license and redistribute profits from IP enforcement to token holders. In addition to protecting its position in the market, the post's author asserted IP enforcement will benefit Curve by reducing competition for bug bounty payments and employee recruitment pertinent to its code. 
In launching its highly anticipated V3 iteration, leading decentralized exchange Uniswap introduced a business source license into its code to protect against the unauthorized commercial use of its code for up to two years. The move was intended to prevent clones from appearing, after SushiSwap and other rival DEXs forked its V2 code and launching vampire attacks designed to siphon away Uniswap's liquidity during the DeFi summer of 2020. Attempts by the notorious self-proclaimed Satoshi Nakamoto, Craig Wright, to prevent websites from hosting the Bitcoin whitepaper have attracted widespread pushback from the crypto community. Wright has also embarked on a campaign to secure as many patents as he can. In April, the Square-led Cryptocurrency Open Patent Alliance, COPA, launched a lawsuit requesting the UK High Court to declare that Craig Wright does not have copyright ownership over the Bitcoin whitepaper. Genesis Digital Assets raises $125 million as mining sector pivots to the West Genesis plans to more than triple its hashing capacity from 2.6A, S to 8.1A, S. Genesis Digital Assets has become the latest Bitcoin mining firm to raise millions towards plans for aggressive expansion amid the exodus of miners from China due to its crackdown on the sector. On July 28, Genesis announced it had closed a $125 million equity funding round led by UK-based Kingsway Capital. The capital will be mobilized to purchase mining hardware and launch new data centers in the United States and Nordic region. The terms of the deal will also see Kingsway Capital CEO, Manuel Stotts, join Genesis Board of Directors. Stotts highlighted Genesis' extensive experience in mining. The GDA team has been building highly profitable large-scale Bitcoin mining farms for nearly eight years and the industry has only been around for 12, he said, adding, Bitcoin is going to be the most important technology for financial inclusion of the global poor and unbanked and mining provides security to make this possible. Genesis currently represents a total hash rate of 2.6 exahashes per second AS, equal to more than 2.6% of global hash rate. The firm expects to increase its capacity by a further 5.5 exahashes by the end of 2023, targeting a data center capacity of more than 1 gigawatt. Since launching in 2013, Genesis estimates it has mined more than $1 billion worth of Bitcoin. Genesis is not alone in looking to raise to expand its operations amid China's mining crackdown, with U.S. miner Stronghold filing for a $100 million initial public offering IPO, on July 27 to expand its operational hash rate by at roughly 75% from 3,000 petahashes per second PHS, to 5,300. On July 28, Chinese-based Bit Mining announced it had entered into an agreement to acquire 2,500 new mining machines worth $6.6 .6 million for deployment in Kazakhstan, anticipating a hash rate increase of 165 PHS. Despite the aggressive moves from industrial-scale mining firms to scale their operations outside of China, Cointelegraph reported that hash rate has become increasingly decentralized over the past 12 months, with smaller firms increasing their share of global hashing power. Cointelegraph also reported that Chinese hash rate had been steadily declining for more than one year leading up to the crackdown, with China's hash power shrinking from 75.5% of the global total in September 2019 to 46% as of April 2021.